Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking a little bit more about the different mechanisms you can use to determine local stability of a first order equation. Um, so before we get started, let's uh, give a little bit of the intuition behind uh, the techniques we're going to be using. So first we're going to uh, write down a lemma. I'm not going to prove this, but uh, it's relatively easy to do so. I'm going to call it a lemma about the translation of a first order difference equation. So suppose we have uh, x bar, which is an equilibrium uh, of a first order uh, difference equation. And then we're going to define a variable uh, u sub t, which is equal to x sub t minus x bar for all t. Then u bar, which is equal to zero, is an equilibrium of a translated uh, difference equation, u sub t plus one is equal to g of u sub t, where g of u, at g of u, is equal to f of u plus x bar minus f of x bar. And furthermore, zero is locally stable or unstable or locally asymptotically stable uh, fixed point of G <clears throat> if and only if the same is true of x bar. So x bar is locally stable or unstable or locally asymptotically stable fixed point of f. OK, and I'm not going to prove this, but it's really easy to show. All you have to do is you just have to um, rewrite everything, and you'll find that all we're doing with this uh, change of variables is shifting everything to the side so that the uh, equilibrium x bar is uh, moved over to zero. And this makes some analyses easier. Uh, if you remember back to MACD44, this is in some sense what we're doing with um, the linearization of methods to find uh, the dynamics of an ODE uh, in terms of the matrices that you have to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of. But anyway, we're going to do the same thing in this case. So let's consider that. Well, suppose that we have a second derivative, let's continuous. So we have f double prime, there exists f double prime continuous on an open interval i, uh, which contains x bar. Then by Taylor's theorem, uh, then by Taylor's theorem, we know that we can approximate it. f of x is equal to f of x bar plus f prime of x bar times x minus x bar plus f double prime of some xi over 2 factorial times x minus x bar squared. So that's the error term. This is the Taylor's theorem with remainder. And this is true for some psi in i. Now, if x of t minus x bar is small, so near our equilibrium, we can approximate by using, we can approximate linearly by saying f of x of t minus x bar is about approximately equal to f prime of uh, x bar times x minus x bar. And of course, we can rewrite this using a change of variables, um, which is saying, or u sub t plus 1 is approximately equal to f prime of x bar times u sub t. And so this is the linear approximation uh, at our equilibrium x bar. And it turns out that we usually don't even need the second derivative. Um, 
The second derivative was nice here because it allowed us to use Taylor's theorem to uh, talk about this informally, but the formal proof doesn't even need Taylor's theorem, and we're going to prove that um, we're going to prove that we can determine some of the dynamics of the this first order non uh, of a first order nonlinear difference equation by just looking at the first derivative um, at our equilibrium, and so this is going to be theorem two point one. If we let f have a continuous first derivative, continuous first derivative, let f prime on an open interval i, open interval i, uh, which has to contain uh, x bar per usual. Uh, and we know that x bar is a fixed point, point of f, so it's an equilibrium solution of our difference equation. Len x bar is a locally asymptotically stable equilibrium of our difference equation, x sub x, uh, t plus 1, is equal to f of x sub t if the absolute value of the first derivative at x bar is less than 1 and unstable if f prime of x bar is greater than 1. Note that we aren't saying anything about what happens when f prime of f x bar has absolute value equal to 1. So that turns out to be a much more subtle case, which we'll get to uh, on Thursday, but we won't be covering it in uh, today's video. The basic reason for that is in the case where it's equal to 1, then you can't just do this first order approximation. You have to deal, you, uh, deal with the higher order terms. Anyway, let's go ahead and prove this. There are two different cases that this theorem covers. So case one, where f prime of x bar is less than one. So now, because f prime is continuous on i, we can choose uh, a closed interval, x bar minus epsilon, x bar plus epsilon, which is contained in i, uh, such that f prime of x is has magnitude less than c, which is less than 1, for all x in this interval. And this is just by continuity, since, well, you know that at the equilibrium it has value less than 1, so in some small uh, closed interval around it, it also has to have value less than 1. And now we're going to apply the mean value theorem from your calculus classes. So by the mean value theorem, So by the mean value theorem, we know that for all x naught in this interval, x bar minus epsilon, x bar plus epsilon, we can say that x bar minus f of x naught, well, that's equal to f of x bar, since x bar is a fixed point, minus f of x naught. And we can apply the mean value theorem to that. And so, well, the difference between them is equal to the slope at some point times the uh, distance between x and x bar, uh, x bar and x naught. So f prime of, I'm going to call this psi 1, times the absolute value of x bar minus x naught. So this here is the mean value theorem. <clears throat> that we can, so this step is mean value theorem, <coughs> where we need psi 1 between x bar and x naught. So because it's between lows, psi 1 is also in this interval, uh, x bar minus epsilon, x bar plus epsilon, which then implies that this is less than or equal to 
uh, c times the distance between x bar and x naught. Okay, so that tells us something about the distance between x bar and f of x naught, and of course this thing here is just uh, x1. And so we're now we can prove by induction that the same sort of relationship holds for every pair of points. So suppose that this is true for uh, x bar minus f of x sub t minus 1, so, or equivalently that the distance between x bar and f of and x sub t is less than or equal to the dis uh, c times the distance between x bar and x sub t minus 1. And that our x sub t minus 1 is in this interval, x bar minus epsilon, x bar plus epsilon. <coughs> and so note that we already have the base case by uh, our previous uh, thing. So we already proved the base case, and now we're basically using this as the basis of induction. Uh, well, if that's the case, well, first, note that then x sub t is equal to f, f of x, f, x sub t minus 1, as we stated, which is in x bar minus epsilon, x bar plus epsilon, because c is less than 1. Then we apply the mean value theorem again, uh, this time to x bar minus x, f of f sub t, which is equal to f of x bar minus f of x sub t, in exactly the same way, applying the mean value theorem again, we get that this is equal to um, f prime of some xi, well, it's called xi of t plus 1, uh, and this is between x bar and x sub t this time, times x bar minus x sub t, but this is in our interval uh, x bar minus epsilon and x bar plus epsilon, so this is less than or equal to c times x bar minus x sub t. Then by induction, x bar minus f of x sub t is less than or equal to c to the t times x bar minus x naught. So because each time you're multiplying by your multiplying by a factor of c. But c is less than 1, so this implies that the limit as t goes to infinity of x sub t is equal to x bar. So x bar is locally asymptotically stable. So if you start close enough to your equilibrium, you will go to it as t goes to infinity, as this shows. And the other case is, I'm not going to give a full detailed proof, but it's basically the same thing in reverse. So case 2, f prime of x bar is greater than 1. Well then, again by the mean value theorem, there exists some epsilon greater than 0, such that for, oh sorry, not quite the mean value theorem yet, we're just stating, this is just by continuity. Uh, if you're close enough, then f prime of x is has a magnitude greater than c, which is greater than 1, and then by the mean value theorem, we again can write out the same thing, so x bar minus f of x naught is equal to f prime of some xi 1, uh, where this is between x bar and x naught, times x bar minus x naught, the dif uh, distance between those two, which is greater than or equal to c times x bar minus x naught. But note that this time c is greater than 1. So if we uh, try to use induction, Eventually, uh, we have let c to the t over x bar minus x naught yeah, is greater than epsilon, and so you're out of the range anymore. Uh, hence, there exists some t such that x bar minus f to the t of x naught is greater than epsilon. So x bar 
is unstable. Okay, and as I said, note that this theorem only applies if f prime of x bar is not equal to 1. When it's equal to 1, you have to, there, there's more stuff that you need to do in order to check whether or not it's stable or unstable. And let's formalize that a little bit. Um, we're going to define the settings in which this is the case. So definition 2.4, um, an equilibrium uh, x bar of x sub t plus 1 equal to f of x, x sub t is hyperbolic if f prime of x is uh, x bar is not equal to 1 and non-hyperbolic otherwise. And for today, for in this video, we're only going to talk about the hyperbolic case. Uh, let's go ahead and give an aside, which is that we've been mostly talking about the equilibrium, the equilibrium, the, the stability of um, steady state solutions, of the equilibrium solutions, but we can also generalize these notions to periodic solutions. So we can also generalize Uh, notions of stability to periodic solutions uh, of period M by considering the function uh, f to the M of X instead. of f of x uh, in theorem 2.1. So basically, recall that we, uh, if something is a periodic solution, then it's a fixed point of f to the m of x. If you think about the equivalent difference equation that just uses f to the m of x instead of f of x, well, then you can just talk about the stability of that as a fixed point of that uh, separate difference equation, and then we can just assign that notion of stability to the periodic solution of the original uh, x sub t is equal to f of x. Uh, x sub t plus 1 is equal to f of x sub t. And uh, let's... And so, I'm not going to prove this, but uh, it should be relatively uh, intuitive. So if we have some... Uh, suppose that we again have a first derivative is continuous on an open interval i. And we know that the m cycle, and let's call this x sub 1 bar, f of x sub 1 bar, through f to the m of minus 1 x sub 1 bar, which contains i. Then we know that the M cycle, then the M cycle is locally uh, just a moment. Asymptotic that's uh, sorry, that uh, is locally asym ah, why am I on the racer? Asymptotically stable if for some K We know that the derivative of f to the m uh, applied to xk bar d x is less than 1 and unstable. If for some k, this derivative. Uh, let me rewrite this notation. I don't like the notation that the bug uses. So, if d 
dx of f to the m of xk bar dx of f to the m xk bar is greater than 1. And you note that in this particular uh, formulation of uh, this theorem, we're saying that it's locally asymptotic uh, locally asymptotically stable if for some k in between 1 and m minus uh, 1, between 1 and um, m or whatever, this is true. Uh, and I, sh I should go ahead and say that this is, well, we're going to use this notation. And so you might be wondering why it is that we only have to check one of our uh, point, one of the points in our M cycle, and the reason is that it's all entirely equivalent. So um, if you look at the chain rule, you'll find that this uh, that this derivative of f to the m to the x uh, sub k bar is entirely equivalent to the derivative of f uh, sub m at x sub um, g. Uh, for any of the other uh, points. So uh, I'll make that a bit more clear in the next video. But as a corollary, uh, which we'll prove in the next video, well, this is 2.1, we know that if you suppose that x sub 1 bar through x sub m bar is an m cycle of the difference equation Uh, x sub t plus 1 is equal to f of x sub t, when the m cycle is asymptotically stable if uh, f prime of x1 bar times uh, f2 of f, uh, f prime of x2 bar all the way through f prime of x m bar is less than 1. It turns out those conditions are equivalent. And um, you, you can see that using the chain rule. I'll go through it in a little bit more detail in the next video. Um, and next time, we're going to be talking about the non-hyperbolic case. So here we gave a bunch of criteria for the hyperbolic case. Um, it turns out that's entirely determined by the sort of linear approximation. But next time, what about the non-hyperbolic case? Uh, we can't ignore higher order terms. Okay, but that ends this uh, video, and um, for the, in the next video, we'll go back through and give a couple examples of applying the sort of these sorts of ideas, as well as giving some more details on things like the chain rule and just explaining everything a little bit uh, more per usual. So I will see you in the next video.